Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, you are a grand and glorious God. A God who saves, a God who gives life, a God who instructs, and a God who teaches. A God who builds up faith, and a God who gives life. To which, Father, we come to you in confession and say, Father, we have not acted. We have not lived. Father, we have acted in ignorance of your ways and of your will. We have acted ignorantly about all the things that you want us to do. Father, we ask you to be with us and forgive us of all of our sins. And we thank and praise you, God, for you have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, who he says to us, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Open our hearts and our minds to your grace and to your mercy. Open our hearts and our minds to your way, so that we live for you and in you and with you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's children say, Amen. Today, as we look at our gospel lesson, which was read just a few moments ago, we're going to be looking at the crowd and its ignorance. We're going to be looking at the ignorance, and in one side of the coin, we're going to be looking at one crowd, two faces. Let's take a look at our gospel lesson. First of all, let's start with the first part of our gospel lesson, Matthew 21. Right there, beginning in verse 1. And we have Bibles that are in the racks of the, attached to the back of the pew in front of you for you to use. And uh, if you did not bring a Bible with you. And so let's take a look. What's happening? Well, Jesus is coming to Jerusalem for the Passover meal. He's coming in to engage the world with, with the Passover, but also he's coming to die. He's coming to establish his Lord's Supper. And on that day we call designate Palm Sunday, Jesus is coming in and he says right there, it says right there in verse 1 of chapter 21, as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent his two, two disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her called fire. Now, here's the fun part. If you recall, in a normal royalty-type move, on what animal does a king ride in on? Usually it's a horse. You know, big, majestic horse in which to ride in. And people look at the king and his majesty and they praise the king. Here comes the king of kings and lord of lords riding on a donkey. And so with this one crowd there, and the crowd was there because of the Passover as well. And this one crowd with two faces did two opposing things. We're going to look at the first one, and it says right there in verse number 8 of our first part of our gospel lesson, a very large, large crowd spread their cloaks on the road. While others cut branches from their trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went on ahead of him and those who that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Now for the most part, the people were there, like I said, for the Passover celebration. They had no idea what was coming or who was coming. They had no clue. They were ignorant of the reality of Jesus Christ. But yet, they were stirred up. They were stirred up by a select few, a part of the crowd that were there. Would, who would stir the crowd up? Well, more than likely, it was Jesus' followers. Jesus' disciples stirred up the crowd. Hey, look, crowd, look who's riding in on that donkey. That's Jesus. He is the King of Kings, and, and He's come, and, and, we, and we need to shout Hosanna, and blessed is the name of Him who rides in the name of God. So those went on ahead of Jesus. The rest of the crowd, <coughs> okay, sure. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea why I'm doing this. But here's Jesus. Yeah, let's celebrate. And 
then we take a look at our second half of our gospel lesson this morning from Matthew chapter 27. In Matthew chapter 27, beginning at verse 19, we're in the trial mode now. And in verse 19, Matthew records, while Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. And Pilate asked, which of the two of you do you want me to release to you? The crowd asked for Barabbas. And here from that, and we learned this on Wednesday, that Pilate more than likely offered Barabbas, a murderer, a, re, a rebel, one who has killed people. He thought, I'll oh, never go for him. So that way I can get Jesus released the way I wanted it to happen. But they got stirred up. The priests and the elders and the Sanhedrin were there stirring the crowd, the crowd to, to shout for Barabbas. Well, what do you want me to do with Jesus? Crucify him was the crowd. Why? What crime has he committed? Pilate responds. And they just shouted all the louder. Crucify him. One crowd. Two faces. Doing two opposing things. They were stirred up. They were ignorant. They were ignorant of the reality of what was going on. The crowd there on Good Friday was just as ignorant of the crowd on Palm Sunday. What's going on? And the, and the Pharisees and the scribes stirred them up and said, no, we don't, we don't want Jesus released. We want Jesus dead. But, you know, take Barabbas instead. No! Oh, oh okay. But you know what is interesting about, about the crowds, of both sides of the crowd? They were saved. To go with Jesus' words as he was nailed to the cross, and they were lifting the cross up to stand it up. And what does Jesus say right in the beginning? Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. They had no idea what they were doing. They had no idea. And even then, Jesus calls out to his Father and says, forgive them. Give them life. And that's what Jesus came and did. Jesus gave them life. Jesus, by means of his death upon the cross, Jesus giving up his body and shedding his blood, forgave them of their sins. He gave them a new life. He gave them grace, mercy, and peace, what they did not deserve, but yet God, in His infinite love and mercy and compassion for them, gave them life. Father, forgive them. Do not know what they are doing. And through what Jesus Christ did for them, they were saved. So now, Let's move forward in time, 2,000 years. And we look upon one church, two faces. You see, we're not different than the crowd. We're not. We do two opposing things. We try to do the things that are good and right before God. We try to do the things like come to worship. Or we try to do things that are good and right and proper in society. Let's say, for example, we are there at the rallies for life. We're against abortion. And we try to do th things right. And we're here today and we're receiving God's grace and mercy. But I have a question to ask you. What about tomorrow? What are you going to do tomorrow morning when you get up, you go to school, you go to work, you, you, you do our, your normal thing on Monday morning? Are you doing something that is on behalf of God, with God in the forefront of your mind? Or are you acting on ignorance of God and you're just doing your normal thing, not giving God a second thought? 
Most of us will go, go out and do our normal thing on Monday morning. Will we ask God to bless our day? More than likely we won't. We'll just go and do it. Will we ask God to guide us and direct us for that day? No, we'll rely on our own abilities and our own strengths and our own actions. Will we ask God to help us when we struggle? Probably not. We'll probably just say, well, I'll work through it. See, we do two opposing things. Well, we try to follow God. We try to do right things. Like I mentioned about, uh, about uh, being there at a right to life summit, uh, a right to life event. Now, we may be there doing the right thing, but do we know why we're doing it? Do we know why we are standing up for life? Or are we doing it just because that's what we're supposed to do? Are we doing it because we believe that life is sacred and holy, created by God at the moment of conception, that every step of a human being's life is sacred before God? Or are we doing it just because everybody else is doing it? You see, we are ignorant of God's will. You see, in many, in various ways, we don't know what we're doing half the time. We do it because that's the way we've always done it before. But why are we doing it? Why are we doing things? We're doing things because of God and His great grace. But sometimes we don't realize that. And you know, even though we act as if we don't know exactly why we're doing it, we do it because that's the right thing to do or because that's the way it's always been done. But you know, we're saved. We're saved from our own ignorance. Jesus wasn't just saying those words, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Just to them on that afternoon, Good Friday, he was saying those words to us also. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Father, forgive them because their sins put me on this cross. <coughs> Father, forgive them for all their ignorance and their inability to, and, and, and no desire to want to follow me. Father, forgive them of all the grace and the mercy that you've given to me. Father, forgive them even though they don't know what they're up, up to. And that's what the Father did. He forgave. He saved us from our sins and our sinfulness through the passion of Jesus Christ. And the passion saves us the ignorant. You've heard the phrase, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. It's a very, very simple phrase. Very wondrous, and yet at the same time, very profound in our lives. For example, what does the word believe mean? What does the word believe mean? It means believe in, the, believe in something or someone that sometimes is contrary to the evidence that we see. I believe in it anyway. Although somebody might say, no, that's wrong, that wrong, that wrong. No, I believe. And in whom do I believe? I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in what He has done for me. I believe in the passion of Jesus Christ. I believe that He rode into Jerusalem to the shouts of Hosanna. Five days later, He was crucified to the shouts of crucify Him. And it was all for us. He did it all for us. He did it to save us from ourselves, to save us from our sins, and to give us a new life, a new life that lives for Him, with Him, and in Him. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who came and took care of all of God's law for us on our behalf because we can't follow it who died on the cross to forgive us of our sins, to be the sacrifice 
of for our sins and our sinfulness and rose to life again to give us a promise of life today for, and, and forever. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And the passion also makes us wise unto salvation. In other words, the passion of Jesus Christ takes us from our ignorance and leads us into wisdom, into God's wisdom. And how does God do that? God simply puts His Word in our lives. God simply puts His grace and His mercy as contained in the Word made flesh and made His dwelling among us. God puts His life into the written Word so that we use it not to be ignorant, but to be informed and wise and continue to grow and develop our faith and our trust in God. I want to share a story from my own family just to kind of reinforce this. Sherry and I were over at our son Ray's house, uh, Ray and Marie, had a couple of years ago. And Ray and Marie, because of Ray's job mostly, Ray and Marie were not going to church. Marie's mother was taking their sons to her church, and they were going to Sunday school with their grandmother. One particular day, it happened to be Gabe's birthday party, we we're all at our son's house, and somebody knocks on the door. Ray gets up, goes to the door. It's David's, our oldest grandson's, Sunday school teacher. And she's, and she's there because she wants to have for David and as well as for the family, for them, okay, this is what we're going to do in Sunday school, this is the lesson that we're going to teach, these are the things that we're going to go over so that your son will learn and grow about Jesus. She did it because. And the beautiful thing after that event, something stirred in my son and daughter-in-law. They started going back to church. They started going back to worship. They started going back to Sunday school. And Ray teaches fifth grade He teaches at one of the classes of the fifth grade Sunday school at his church. Why? Because somebody, because they didn't want David to be ignorant of God's word and not know what God's wanted. She came to their door and said, here's what we're teaching this year. I'd love to see you there. And that was a catalyst. That was a Holy Spirit moment that brought them back into a relationship with Jesus so that they would be made wise unto the salvation of Jesus Christ. What God wants from us, I believe, is people who are not doing things just because. It's the way we've always done it before. Somebody expects you to do it. God does not want us to be ignorant of His will and His way. To do things that are just according to my own way. God wants us to be wise of salvation and grace and love and mercy. God wants us to be aware of His passion for us and His life for us. So that we no longer bounce to and for, backwards and sideways on, on all the whims of the world, but that we are solid, stable on the grace and the mercy of God. So that when the world does what happens, that we stay stable on the grace of God. When we hear all different kinds of, of words about people, we stay stable on the word of God. When we hear sound bites of, oh, I promise to do this, or I promise to do that, and this guy's horrible, and that guy's horrible, you've heard it. We call it the political realm today. Instead of deciding and living 
in, in ignorance of the options and the opportunities and the positions that they take. Let us do our homework. Let us dive in. And let us dive into the reality of life. Let us not be ignorant. Let us be full of grace and mercy of the ways of God. And live our lives in Him. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.